All right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus. This is episode 163. Can you believe it? Hey, I thought today we do something special that I'm showing you the trades that I entered today and I'm actually going through my thought process of why I entered exactly those trades and why I passed on some other trades. And uh, this would be according to the wheel strategy. And I, I thought that you might find this helpful. So if you agree that this would be helpful, click on like right now and let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the markets. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises, and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then Click on like right now and let's get started. All right, what a crazy day in the market. And this is why it is perfect to enter actually some trades according to the wheel strategy. Uh, let's jump over on the charts and see what is going on today. And then I will show you the exact trades that I entered today, why I took them and why I pass on some others. And we'll see, maybe there are some more trades that we can take right now since the markets are still open. So looking at the indices right now, so we see here the Dow Jones is making a new all time high today. So the Dow Jones right now up, uh, what, almost 0.3%. On the other hand, the Nasdaq is down more than 2%. Now, the S&P is somewhat caught in the middle and is down 0.7%. So this is actually a perfect day to go shopping for trades according to the wheel strategy. So let me just show you this map here from, uh, from FinMC, which is just illustrating perfectly what is happening today. So I'm just going to draw a line here and uh, in the upper left up here, we see all the growth stocks. And as you can see, pretty much all of the growth stocks are down significantly today. Microsoft being down almost 2%, Apple more than 2%, Google 2.5%, Facebook 4%, Amazon almost 3%, Tesla 5.5%. And then on the other hand, we have here the good old value stocks and these value stocks are all up today. I mean, household names like Procter and Gamble. Here we have Walmart. Uh, we have uh, what GE, we have CVS. All of them are up. So this is the perfect day to actually look at the wheel strategy and see if we can find anything. So I thought I'll do it live together with you here so that you see of uh, why I took the trades that I took and why I passed on some others. So let's jump over to the PowerX Optimizer. This is the tool that I personally use to find the best trades. By the way, if you're new to this channel and don't know what I'm talking about with the wheel strategy, I have a book for you. It's called The Wheel Options Trading Strategy. You can get it on Amazon for what, 25 bucks or on my website for $4.95. And I'll link to a playlist in the description where you can learn more about this strategy. But uh, so this is the tool, the PowerX Optimizer that I use. Let's go to the Wheel Analyzer and see what's on dock today. So as we are going to the Wheel Analyzer, uh, let me just actually click on AMD so that I can explain to you what you're seeing here. And uh, first of all, up here in the upper right, we have the Wheel Scanner. It refreshes every two minutes and shows me stocks that are technically meeting the criteria. And now I can go through this list and mark it with happy faces as you can be sad faces for I don't want to trade this or uh, you see it a little bit well, almost here peaking up um, a maybe. So then here we see technically what we could do. So right now, if we take a look at AMD, we see the chart of AMD here and we see, oh my gosh, if right now we are looking at a strike price of 7250, which would be somewhere around here, right? We can sell a put and for selling a put, we are collecting a premium and we can collect a premium of 71 cents. 
So this means that based on the buying power that is needed, we would make uh, around 30% per year annualized if we are doing this. So a few things, and this is where I want to show you of how I'm going through this when I do it. So the first thing, I'm actually getting rid of uh, all the annotations and start again. So there's a few things that I like to look at. First of all, the key question is, do I want to own this stock, AMD, at the strike price that is suggested right here, which is right now $72.50? And uh, just looking at this chart, I see that there's some solid support at the 7250 level. So yes, this would be a stock that I wouldn't mind owning. Now, the next thing, this is where I'm flagging it with, as you can see, a little smiley face and say, yes, this is a stock that I like. So the next thing is I want to see, okay, how many days to expiration do I have? And preferably, I like to collect weekly paychecks. So I want to see, is it possible to get enough premium for this Friday so that the DTE is actually less than five days? This would be perfect. So here right now, it's 11 days, so it, it's not bad. So AMD is definitely a possible candidate. Uh, but let's actually go through the list and see if we find anything else. Now, as we are going through the list, so the next uh, stock that is coming up here on the list is CGC, Canopy Growth Corporation. Now, here we see this crazy chart and we see that the suggested strike price right here is $22. So now the question is, do I want to own CGC at $22 if I'm getting assigned? Because when you're trading the wheel, the idea is that you're selling puts and collecting premium, then you might or might not get assigned. And uh, if you are assigned, number three, you would sell calls. But the key is, if you are getting assigned, do you like this stock? Now, if I'm looking at this stock, it was going crazy up to what? Uh, $57 up here and then plummeting all the way down to right now 2418. So for me, this is a crazy stock. And for me, this is not a stock that I want to own at any level. But, but again, this is where it might be different for you. So the key question really is, do you like the stock and do you want to own it at this price and right now of 22? because that is the strike price that is coming up. And for me, that is a no. And this is why I'm flagging it as a no. So anyhow, so uh, going through the list, looking at CRSP, CRSP Therapeutics. And uh, this is where right now you see it's pretty much the same. Uh, we can actually get some good premium at a strike price of 85. You see it right here. We're getting a dollar ten in premium. That is not bad. Annualized, this would give us thirty nine percent. So that's pretty good. But this here looks pretty much like like CGP uh, or the what was it CGC, right? It was going up like crazy from what thirty dollars all the way to two hundred thirty dollars, then plummeting down a drop of fifty percent to one hundred ten dollars, and right now moving around here. So again. The key question is, do you want to own this stock? And if you know something about uh, CRISPR therapeutics and you say, oh my gosh, they are awesome. They are the best company ever. And you want to buy them at a discount at $85, then it would make sense for you to sell this put. For me, this is not a company that I like. So again, here, a frowny face like, no, thank you, not for me. So here's another one uh, that I haven't flagged just yet. So if you see right now, it is uh, actually neutral, which means that I haven't had a chance to look at this. This is why I thought, hey, let's do this together. So first of all, the strike price that we are looking at is $44. So it would be right here. So this is the strike price. And uh, this is uh, the iShares. Uh, let's just go a little bit in bigger so that you see it the iShares China Large Cap ETF. So this is, a, this is an ETF that is tracking large cap stocks in China. 
And uh, as you can see, I mean, this had also a pretty impressive run up here all the way from uh, 35 to 55 and has now retraced uh, to around 44. So we are trading on on half of this. So again, the question is, do you want to own uh, an ETF that mirrors Chinese stocks at 44, knowing that it could go higher or it could go lower? So for me, this is one where I would say, no, thank you, not liking this one. Uh, so you, you get the idea. Uh, we are going down through this list of everything that is popping up here fairly quickly. Next on the list is GameStop. Now GameStop, I don't know, you, you might have heard me saying this. If you want to trade GameStop, that is good for you. If you want to own GameStop, this would be a possibility because as you can see, there are strike prices popping up at around 110. So if you like this stock and you would like to own GameStop at 110, then by all means, sell puts. You're getting some really good premium, as you can see, 52% annualized that you could get here. For me, that is not really a stock that I like to trade because you might have heard the story. I mean, this went from next to nothing all the way up to 500, came all the way down to 30. So from 500 to 30, then went back up to 350. So for me, this is an absolute crazy stock and this is a clear no for me. So um, I, I want to show you before we move on going through the list here, I want to show you the stocks that I took today, the trades that I took today. So this morning we were trading together with our mastermind members. And uh, this is where we found a few good opportunities that popped up on the scanner. And this is what we do when we are trading together. We're just going through it live and uh, Al and, and also Mark, we provide our input to let everybody know what we think about the stocks. Is this helpful thus far? Uh, if it is, do me a favor, click on like, uh, because this way more people are seeing this video and I thought uh, it would be cool to see real trades, real money. So let me show you actually the trades that I took this morning. So this is where we are going to the calculator. And uh, I want to first show you the two new trades that I took this morning. So one of them was Snap. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so that you see it. So this morning when we took the trade, Snap was trading at uh, 52.50 and we had an opportunity to take the 47 strike price and receive 25 cents per option traded. Now, according to my account size, I could trade 21 options. And you see it here, the DTE, the days to expiration, is only four days. So this is what I like. I like the idea of weekly paychecks. And uh, this is why I thought, OK, this would be perfect. Now, trading 21 contracts means that I would make $525. Eh. Now, you can't see the 525 anymore. Let me just see if I can correct this. Look at this. <laughs> that did not work at all. OK, you get the idea. Five hundred and twenty five dollars, which means that I would make one hundred and five dollars per day. It means also that based on the price this morning, Snap could drop another 10 percent and I would still be OK. So let's take a look at the chart so that you see exactly of what I did there. So uh, we're moving over there. Uh, we are going to Snap. So as you can see, Snap right now is trading at uh, 52.33. So very similar to where it was this morning. We sold the 47 strike price. And the key question again is, do I want to own Snap at a price of 47? And if I'm looking back here pretty much uh, until uh, December, so this is uh, the, the last six months, because right now, as we're recording this video, it is May. What is it? May 10th, right? So if you're looking back over the past uh, six months, we see that uh, the 47 price, actually probably the 48 price, has been very solid support. One, two, three, four times, five, six times. So solid support here. And it has been trading uh, pretty much, if you look at this, uh, Snap has been trading between what I want to say 48 and maybe if we draw a line here between 65. So for me, this is where I say, you know what? I wouldn't mind buying Snap at a discount because if this has a possibility to maybe go back up to uh, 65 
I'm okay to own it at a price of 47. Now this assumes that it would go below 47 on Friday. So today is Monday. Again, we have four more days until expiration. But this is here. Um, this is here a stock that for me is a stock that I wouldn't mind to own. And again, you can have a completely different opinion and that is okay, right? So uh, also with the other stocks, this is why when we are using the PowerX Optimizer, see people ask me all the time uh, if we can make these, uh, uh, these smiley faces in the way that I like to trade the stocks. But you see, it doesn't really matter because everybody has a different outlook on stocks. Um, there, there might be some of you who actually love the idea of buying GameStop at a discount of 110 because you might believe that it goes up to 200 or 300 and all of this is good. Okay, anyhow. So this is uh, the first trade that I entered this morning. Is, is this making sense of why I entered Snap here and uh, why we thought that this was a good trade? Okay, cool. Uh, Webby is asking, Snap is Snapchat? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is Snapchat, so yep. Uh, the other one uh, that popped up this morning that uh, we liked and uh, we traded in our mastermind group is SQ. So SQ is a little bit a higher price stock. It's square, right? I mean, you, you know, these little things where you can take uh, payments on. So it's a payment processor. This morning when we looked at the stock, it was trading at 221 and 91 cents. And we had a possibility to sell a put at 202.50. Uh, so I got a dollar in premium. And this means since I was trading five contracts or I am trading five contracts that I would make $500 and uh, this is again based on uh, the next four days. So I'm looking at a, around $100 per day or a 36% RI. So I thought this is pretty good. So this way we already have uh, $500 here. And then if we uh, zoom out another $525 here. So thus far on only these two trades, that would be a thousand dollars for the week, which is not bad at all. And the week has just started. So let's take a look at the chart here uh, to show you why I chose this one. And uh, if you take a look at Square, it looks very, very similar uh, to Snapchat. Wouldn't you agree? So over the past six months, if you're looking back at December, uh, we see some actually pretty solid support around uh, 2250 to 200, right? We see that support held once here, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. So it has been trading between 200 and uh, if you just uh, look at this, maybe 260. So it has been trading here in a range. And right now, if I can pick it up and buy some of this at a discount, what I think, there's a good possibility that it bounces back up to 230, 240, 250, maybe 260. So uh, I, I like this idea here and uh, I like the premium, I like the strike price. Because if you're looking at this uh, on the wheel calculator, so uh, this means that also in the same way as uh, Snap can drop right now another 10%, this can drop another 9% and I still would not get a sign. So these are the two that popped up this morning that I liked. Um, if you're looking at the, at the scanner right now, so one of the trades that is popping up right now that I was trading recently is uh, is actually AG. Let me just bring up the chart here. So AG, it's actually a pretty cool trade. So as you can see, I flagged it uh, with a smiley face because I like it. So right now you could get the uh, 1450 strike price. And the question is, do you like to own AG, which is a uh, first majestic silver corporation? So I, I, I would assume that they are mirroring the silver prices. Do you want to own this at $14.50? Right now it is trading at $15.85. The one thing that I do not like about this is again, the DTE, the days to expiration. I like to go for shorter term trades that are only lasting four or five days because I like the idea of weekly paychecks. And uh, this is why right now, not too interested in this. Uh, we, we could see if maybe there's enough premium in this week's uh, put, but uh, just looking at this here, no, thank you. All right, I wanna go through a few others. Uh, so go to, I haven't, uh, 
I haven't fixed this one. Uh, previously, they have changed the ticker symbol. Previously, this has been GSX. So uh, if you have traded before, you might know it under GSX and they just recently changed it to go to. As you can see, I have not looked at this today. So right now um, it's trading at uh, around $25 and we could actually go for a strike price of 19. But the question is, do you want to own go to at 19? I mean, it has been trading here at 20, moved all the way up to what, 150, came all the way back down, up and down. And I mean, wow, for me, this uh, stock is way too crazy. For you, it might be that you say, you know what, loving it, this is awesome. Yes, I would love to own GSX or as they're called right now, go to. Uh, I would love to own them at $19 because I know something that nobody else knows. Uh, I have a friend who is working for them and they're about to, I don't know, something like this. So anyhow, um, don't like this one and this is why right now I will flag this as a no. And there we go. So um, let's just see a few others that are popping up. Okay, as you can see here, I, I just scrolled down to see which are marked. So Snap is still right now on dock. And as you can see, uh, you can get the strike price of 20 here that expires on May 14th. Right now you can get 10 cents. So uh, this would give you 37% annualized. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I, I still believe that this is probably a pretty good trade here. And this is why I marked it with a smiley face. All right, cool. Uh, so let's see what else is popping up there. There's a few that I marked as a maybe, as you can see here, uh, MU and NEO. So let's take a look at this. Let's actually take a look at uh, MU, which is Micron Technology. And so Micron Technology, uh, as we see, uh, the 77 strike price is popping up here. So if you put it on the chart, the 77 is right here, right? So this would be a 77 strike price. And now again, the key question is, do you want to own Micron Technology at 77? Now, uh, if you're looking back here over the past, uh, <clears throat> over the past, uh, what, six months, which is approximately here, we also see uh, that it has some solid support here at 76, 77. So it has been going up and down. So not too crazy here. It's been trading pretty much between, in a range between what, uh, 80 and uh, maybe 95, somewhere around this. So this is why I flagged it as a maybe, it's a possibility. I don't like it as much as I like SQ and Snap. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, why not? It expires this Friday. So you have four days to expiration, right? Uh, the buying power required is $7,700. And based on the buying power, you would make 34% um, annualized. That is not bad at all. That is not bad at all. You see, uh, if based on this buying power here, uh, if you can make around 30 to 40% per year, uh, if you're using a margin account, this means that you would make between 60 and 80% based on the cash. And I think this is a really, really good return. I mean, wouldn't you agree? So anyhow, um, these are the trades that, uh, that I'm actually in that I took and, uh, oh, pins is popping up. Look at this pins just popped up. You see, uh, it just came up here and, uh, this is a trade that I took recently. I am not as happy with pins anymore as I was. See, previously I saw that there was some, some solid support probably around the, the 62 level. Yeah, so this support right now has been broken to the downside. We are trading at 58. So therefore right now, um, even though previously I liked it, right now I do not like it because I don't see strong support here anymore. So, and this is what uh, I want to see. I want to see strong support on the chart. And again, the support previously has been somewhere around uh, between 60 and 62. And since we are trading at, at 58 right now, uh, so for me, this now is a no. Don't like it as much as I used to. Uh, previously I did, now I don't. So this were also, um, we, we are, uh, planning to, to reset the flag so that it doesn't happen to you that, for example, 
uh, you have a you have a red flag on some of these stocks and then they actually look pretty good here. Um, but let's just uh, sort this to see if anything else that came up. Uh, AG, we talked about this. Uh, VIPs came up. So VIPs I haven't flagged yet. So we can take a look at this together. And um, VIPs is a VIP shop. No idea what these guys are doing. Um, right now we see that uh, strike price is at around 23. So if you like the idea of owning VIP for 23, then this is a trade that you should take. For me, not really, because you see they came from 12, went all the way up to 46. This is what? 400%, a 400% increase, and then they dropped hard to 25 here. So um, this way, nah, not the biggest fan of this one, not for me. So for me, this would be a no. But again, for you, it might be a yes. So I, I still like a G here. Uh, would like to see that uh, we we have maybe a, a shorter term trade that doesn't go for 11 days, that only goes for four or five days. But here's the good news. I mean, since the markets today are, are kind of crazy, I mean, just uh, just look at this. If, if we are zooming in here, you see the Dow right now is kind of flat. Uh, the S&P is down 0.9% uh, and the NASDAQ is getting hit hard by 2.45% down. I believe that this will be the theme of the week. So therefore, when going shopping, and this is what I did today, I don't need to go shopping and spend all of my money today. Because let me show you one more trade. Um, again, before I show you more trades, is, is this helpful? I just want to show you another trade that I'm in right now. And uh, if you like this, uh, again, click on like. See that uh, three people don't, do not like me going through trades. And that's cool. Hey, there's plenty of other videos here on YouTube. So whatever you like best, I don't have any cute kittens that I can show you. All I have is real money and real trades. And I know sometimes that might be boring. For me, it's really fascinating. I'm loving it. So, uh, but I want to show you a trade that I'm in. So it's LVS. So here's what I did with LVS. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you see it. So with LVS, there we go. I sold a put with a strike price of 58 because um, I thought, yeah, you know what? We have some support here, here. Uh, we have some more support here and here. And then we were going up and I thought, hey, you know what? It's nicely trading in a range between what? 58 to around 66 if we go up there. So I thought, you know what? This is pretty good support. Here's what happened on Friday. On Friday, it dipped below. 58 and therefore I got a sign. So right now I am owning 1,700 shares of LVS and uh, at a price of 58. Now today they are down to 57.17. So I'm losing some money on the shares. But this is where I said earlier, um, here, here's what we do with the wheel strategy. Number one, we are selling puts on stocks that we like and we don't mind getting assigned at the strike price. This is so important. Let me repeat this. We are selling puts on stocks that we like and we don't mind getting assigned at the strike price. You see, if you're if you're selling a put and then on Wednesday or Thursday, you're sitting there and say, oh, I might get assigned, I might get assigned. Then it wasn't a good stock to begin with. Yeah, the, the goal here is that on Wednesday or Thursday, you say, Ooh, I might get assigned. I might get assigned, right? If this is your reaction, then you pick the right stock. And I thought on Thursday or Friday, uh, when it looked like I might get assigned, I said, Ooh, I'm getting assigned on LVS. I'm getting assigned because here is why I want to show you what exactly happened here on LVS, what I did there. So let's go back to the PowerX optimizer. Oops. There we go to the PowerX optimizer, we are going to the wheel calculator. And now I want to show you LVS. So here's what happened last week. Last week, we're looking at, at this column right now. I sold puts and I collected $595. So I collect this premium regardless of whether I'm getting assigned or not. So then today, this morning, we got to go to step number two. So this here is step number one, selling puts. 
Step number two is selling calls once you get assigned. Remember the three steps? One, you sell puts, you might or might not get assigned, and then you sell calls. One, two, three, it's that easy. Um, so anyhow, so this means that uh, the stock purchase price, and I'm zooming in here right now, was $58 and I got assigned 1,700 shares. So this morning I sold a call, a 59 call for 70 cents that expires on March 14th. Now, there's two things that can happen. Either by the end of the week, by March 14th, which is the end of the week, um, LVS will be trading above $59. If this is the case, I'm getting $1,190 in premium for my option, plus, plus I will make more money on the stock. So my total gain, if it moves above 59, so this is here for larger than 59, will be $2,890. If it stays below 59, I will only make $1,200. So you, you get the idea. So where, where do we stand? for the week here thus far. Let me just uh, move back here so that you see what is happening here this week. So uh, first of all, I'm right now, I mean, this is what will happen for sure because I will always keep the premium. So I'm making definitely $525 plus $500 plus at a minimum, at a minimum $1,190. So this is like a thousand, so uh, at least thus far, and today is only Monday, so this week I will make at least $2,200 and if everything is according go, going to plan uh, and uh, LVS is closing above 59 on Friday, I will actually make another $1,500, so this would be $3,700. So this is, and I, it's today, it's only Monday, so there we go. Anyhow, so um, this is uh, where I wanted to show you of what I traded today. And now, since you are here live, I want to take a look at the questions and see if I can answer as many questions as possible. And I know that right now there's more than 600 people watching us live. So let me just jump on into the chat box here and, uh, and quickly see if we can answer as many questions as possible. So I'm, <laughs> I need to have my, my handy dandy iPad that I use for my drawing. You see this? I need to have it tethered. I probably should look for a longer cable. That would probably make sense. <laughs> so because right now my cable is in the way. Anyhow, good, good, good. So uh, let's just see. Let's take a look at uh, some questions. So good to see everybody here. Um, so Claire says, bad day all around can't even type correctly, the two stocks that are down are CSIQ and Chewy. And again, CSIQ, not my favorite at all, right? And again, if you like CSIQ, uh, Claire, so that's uh, that, that's up to you. Uh, for me, this is not a stock that I would trade at Chewy. Going back and forth, uh, so we have been discussing it in the mastermind and uh, not really liking it, but you see today, Chewy, here, here's the reason why Chewy is going down. Let me just uh, show you. Uh, so you always have to see what, what does the, the rest of the gang to do, right? And uh, if you're looking at the map, so Chewy is delivering dog food and dog toys and uh, pharmacies. Yeah, and you see that Amazon today is going down 2.7% and so is Chewy. It is just overall the rotation uh, from this growth stocks into value stocks here. So uh, I, I wouldn't be too worried about Chewy. It'll probably bounce back up here. So it'll be okay so uh mike says my portfolio seems to me of the opposite from the market well okay just make sure that, rule number one pick stocks that you like to own that is so important here hey Teresa, so good to see you um good 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 all right greetings from toronto all right let's uh let's actually go for the questions and uh, johnny says um Look at the Dow chart time for a bear call spread. <laughs> Oops, wrong channel. You see, um, I'm not the biggest fan of spreads. We will talk about this probably in uh, next week in Coffee with Marcus. I, I, because I want to share uh, the, the bear, uh, what do you have, the bear call spread or bear put spreads and compare them to what I'm doing here. So you see, with, with spreads, you're, you're buying some insurance, which uh, I don't think is needed, but I'll, I'll compare these. I'll compare these. Okay. 
So Frank says, uh, how to zoom in in the P uh, new PXO um, in the same way as you scroll down and up a page. So if you're just clicking on the charts and it's like scrolling up and down. So you see for me, I have a trackpad and a Mac. Uh, it is just uh, scrolling down and scrolling up with two fingers here. Okay, good. Let's see. Um, so Alex got stuck with covered calls. Um, didn't quite, quite catch in what stock chat is going on for so cheap, uh, uh, for so quickly here. Okay, um, so <laughs> Johnny says, I want to own all of my trades until I get a side, then I want out, I hear you. So this is where it really pays to think twice or three times or four times before you place a put and not just look at the premium. Okay, so Dell says, uh, sold AMD put today. I think AMD was a good one today. Good, okay. Good. Uh, Webby says uh, Canopy might be a pot stock. It is. It is. And it's not my favorite. It's like Tilray. I mean, they're all over the place. It's just crazy. Okay. So, um, yeah, Lonnie says stuck in Tilray, working my way out. Oh, good luck with this. I mean, this is not a stock that I want to be in. If it goes so crazy, I don't want to do this. So, Webby Wonder says tried biotech, got my fingers burned. I hear you. Biotech can be crazy with trials that they have going on, right? And then a trial is successful or not, and uh, phase two and phase three, and all this kind of stuff. Anyhow, good, good, good. So, MH says got assigned Etsy at 170. Current price is 168. Uh, Love the stock, how aggressive would you be on the call strike price? Depends on how much you love the stock, right? I mean, if you just want to get out of this, then you would just uh, sell a call at 170. Uh, if you see enough premium at 171, 172, do this. In general, you see, it makes more sense to sell calls when the market is up. And today I would assume that Etsy is down like the overall value uh, growth stocks here. So uh, maybe wait until it pops up a little bit and then you can probably sell the the 171, 172, maybe even the 173. So it really depends on how much you like the stock. And Johnny, Option Finder said, well, as soon as I may not want to get out, if this is you, then uh, just sell the 170 call. This way you get out of the stock and you're lowering the, your, your cost basis here. Anyhow, so um, good. Georgia says the zoom in so helpful, much easier to read. Yes, you can do this right now. Okay. Good. So let's see. Jake says a lot of stocks had a nice run, but are now falling. It's because you have the rotation going on and I, I wouldn't worry about one day. I mean, the Nasdaq, where did we end up? Uh, let me just quickly see of uh, where did we end up? So I'm sharing my screen. So Nasdaq is down 2.6%. Uh, so that's uh, that's a lot for the Nasdaq. Let me just bring up the chart here of the Nasdaq. So as you can see, this is a pretty significant drop, but this is nothing. Uh, I mean, we are just coming from highs here. And uh, we, we can take a look at this. Uh, if you're looking at the high of 14,000 here approximately, and right now we are down like what, 700. So this here is just a drop of 5%. That's nothing, right? I mean, a correction is defined as a drop of 10%. So if we go down all the way to what, 14 to 12, 600. So if you're going somewhere here, right? I mean, this would be a correction. So if you're going down to 12,600, this here is what the NASDAQ does all the time, going up and down. It's called normal market fluctuation. Okay, good, good, good. So uh, let's see what other questions we have. Uh, Nathan's head was uh, signed on Riot at 37, sold calls today against my position. And uh, yeah, I mean, Riot, we can take a look at this really quick see what uh, what Riot is doing. Uh, it's it's a good stock. I, I've been trading Riot and Mara. So uh, you have been assigned at oh, 37. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty high. I would not have taken that because uh, this very again, wh where do you see some support here, right? And if you're looking at some support, I would say that there's probably more th support somewhere here at around 34 to 35. So I think the 37 was a little bit too aggressive. And again, the key question is, do you want to own Riot at a price of 37? And Nathan, if this for you is like, heck yeah, of course, then good. Um, anyhow, so Dell says sold Snap also. Okay, chat got into Snap. Fantastic. Yes, Snap is Snapchat. Exactly. Okay, Jenny got into uh, Overstock. We can take a quick look at Overstock here uh, to see what's happening with Overstock. Uh, let's just see, let's bring it up here in OSTK, oops. So um, Overstock, there we go. 
So you got in, you said, at 70 today. You see, this where I, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't understand why. Because for me, there would be definitely more support at 60. Do you see this? This is where we had support here. One, two, three, four times. So 60 for me is solid support. 70 is right here. So this is 70. Why would you do this? I mean, again and again, if you love, love, love Overstock and uh, maybe you're shopping on Overstock all the time and you love this company and you think that overall, oh yeah, they will go back to 104, then this is okay. For me, I'm definitely more conservative. So for me, the 60 uh, would have been a much, much better choice here than the 70. But again, every trader is different. And uh, Jenny, if you love it at 70, again, the key question is, do are you okay owning overstock at a price of 70 i would be happier owning it at 60. okay anyhow cody love this video okay cool yeah johnny yeah johnny sees the same as i do here ostk support at 60. exactly uh so gerald is asking how many companies would you suggest to trade each time for me personally it's five no more than five depending on your account size if you have a smaller account start with three so once your account is above 50,000, I would say you can go to four or five. If your account size is below 50,000 or your buying power, let's talk about buying power is below 50,000, I suggest that you do three. Gerald, is this helpful? Okay. Eggy is asking, what do you think of Palantir? Palantir is a crazy stock. I mean, take a look at this. I mean, uh, let's just go to PLTR. I mean, again, for me, it is crazy uh, because if you're going back and zooming out, look at this. This is what the stock did. I mean, it started trading here at uh, what? Around uh, $10. So this is here around $10. Went all the way up to $45, came all the way down to $25 and is now definitely on its way down. So 1847, I believe that this could actually go all the way back down to 10. So uh, this is possibility. So for me, that is not a stock that I would like to own. Anyhow, good. Uh, so Mike says, do you do any fundamental analysis? Uh, no, for me, it's more like, do I know the stock and do I like the story, right? So AMD, for example, I know the stock, I like the story. AMD has been around forever. They know how to make chips. They have one major competitor. The major competitor is Intel. There's a few others popping up right now. Apple is making their own chips. But overall, I mean, we have a semiconductor shortage right now. So chips are in high demand. They're in everything right now. They are in, in iPads. They are in your, in your watches. They are in your phones. They are in your fridge. They are in your microwave. I mean, there's chips everywhere. They're in cars, right? So this were... I think it would make sense. Um, so Palantir, on the other hand, don't know. So this is uh, the kind of fundamental analysis that uh, that I'm doing. Okay, cool. So uh, Georgia says, uh, this is great. Would you consider doing the same type of video with PowerX trades? Yeah, I, I did recently. I can do some more. Um, I can maybe, uh, let's see, I've planned something for Thursday. So maybe next Monday, we can go through a few things here. Georgia, we can absolutely do this. Okay, Jake says uh, urgent, uh, earnings on the 13th. Okay, so yeah, that's another thing to, to check just to make sure as soon as you bring up your trading platform, you'll probably see that, uh, <clears throat> that there are uh, earnings coming up and then you would skip this. Okay, um, ARK, yeah, you can do this. ARK at 94, ARK is not bad. I mean, ARK Investment Funds, Kathy Woods uh, Fund, not at all bad. Okay, good, ATX, uh, Pinery says, I like the idea of weekly paychecks too. Good, fantastic. Good, uh, Joe says, I would like to see in future release to be able to only see opportunities that expire next days. We are working on this. It's planned for a version 2.2 or 2.3. I have to look up our, our roadmap. Uh, so we have a roadmap where we have planned out uh, the versions up to 2.6 right now. As you know, we are 2.0. So the next is the broker integration, but yes, absolutely. It is on dock, it is going to happen. Yep, yeah, uh, Jim also, yep, yeah, can't wait until I can filter out expiration dates beyond this Friday. Uh, we're probably uh, six to eight weeks away, something like this, right? Uh, just to give you an idea. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, Agi says, why don't I get the same stocks when I run the scanner? I don't know. Uh, contact the team uh, at uh, support or even better, you know what? Just go to Mighty Networks. Post a screenshot in Mighty Networks. That's our uh, private members area here. And uh, when you do this, uh, this is the quickest way to help. So just go there and uh, it'll be fine. Good. 
All right, um, Ben says, do you watch for earnings dates before expiration? Yes, I do not like to trade into earnings right before expirations. So I uh, wanna make sure that uh, we have earnings after my expiration here. Okay, good. Uh, so Vanguard actually uh, requires options level two to sell cash secured puts. Um, go to uh, rockwelltrading.com slash broker. There's a broker that we are recommending. I did a video on this. Uh, you can look on this channel here or I post the link in the description. The broker is called Tradier. If you use the link rockwelltrading.com slash broker, you're getting a special deal and they're way easier with these option levels uh, because they are from for active traders here. Okay. Uh, Webby says pins look scary to me right now. I agree. I agree. Good. All right. So let's see. Um, I have to run a rescue, a rescue mission on GSX. Uh, yeah, this was my, my first choice. I mean, I, I don't like this. So really make sure that you love, love, love. Don't only look at the premium. That's the worst thing that you can do. Get blinded by premium. So uh, just make sure that you say, yes, I would love to own this stock here. Okay, um, will you not exit the stock even when it gets assigned when major support has been broken? Uh, you see, you, you don't want it here with the wheel, you don't want to exit with a huge loss. There's uh, ways how you can fly rescue missions. I did a video on this, take a look at this. I'll link to it in the description. Uh, this way you can uh, take a look at the video of what I do. I like to uh, bring my cost basis down and at the same time bring my break even down so that a small pop is actually helpful here. So anyhow. Good. Fernando, so good to see you. The scanner is the best investment I've done in recent years. Yeah, if, you, um, if you're interested in the software, we have a website. It's called PowerX Optimizer. So feel free to go there. You find all of the information there. And uh, if this is uh, helpful, then uh, yeah, uh, you, you might consider investing in the software. If you can make a, a few hundred dollars each week, you will have uh, your investment recouped in just a matter of weeks. So anyhow. Good. Okay. Elena, good to see you here. Cody, love it. Okay. So Patty, uh, Webby says, I, I love coffee with Marcus every day. I'm trading with my mastermind every day. I don't know if they're sick and tired of hearing me. It's my head coach, Mark Hodge and I. Uh, so this week we are having a whole week of trading. Usually we do it three times a week. This week uh, we're trading together every morning. Uh, but yeah, it would be too much for me to do the coffee with Marcus every day. Anyhow, okay, Drew, um, okay, entered Snap today, good. I, I think Snap is a good one, it's a solid one. Okay, so Louis says, is there any email address that I can question to that uh, I might not make it onto the live chat? Absolutely, uh, you can even text us. So call or text the office. You can call if you wanna to talk to somebody, uh, feel free, 512-337-1885, uh, or you can text if you prefer texting, or you can just email to support at rockwelltrading.com. I know there is so many uh, questions here. I try to go through as many as possible. Um, anyhow, yeah, just uh, shoot us an email. We'll be happy to help. Teresa in the mastermind. Yeah. Hey, we, we did it this morning, Teresa. What are you talking about? We looked at so many stocks this morning together. How many stocks did we look at? Like 10, 12, maybe 14, 15? And we found these two and they're really, really good. Okay. Good. Claire's asking, how far above the assigned price do you go to sell calls? Really depends how aggressive you want to get rid of this stock, right? I mean, if you like this stock, so let's go back to LVS for a moment. Uh, so LVS is a stock that I'm in, as you know. So here I decided uh, for LVS, you know what? You could actually say, I do believe that LVS will actually go back up to 62. So in this case, you would sell the 62 call. For me, this is a shorter term trade. If I can make, uh, what, $2,500 in one week, and this would be in addition to the $500 for next week, I'm going much closer. I'm not greedy. The markets have taught me when I'm greedy, it's never good. So this is why I sold uh, the 59. So if you see a quick pop here, I'm already out of this, but uh, I would make uh, around $3,000 um, on this stock. So, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, $3,000 in two weeks, that is not bad at all. Okay. Hey, um, Tajin said, uh, you said uh, May 14th. Oh, I said March. Yeah, I mean, May 14th. We got this, right? Today is uh, May 10th. And yes, this is live. Sometimes I get the question, I don't think this is live. This is recorded. No, right now it is May 10th and uh, it is... Uh, 
4 4 19 eastern time oh my gosh we are already a little bit over time hey um what was this helpful at all if it is click on like and please share this video with as many people as uh as you can all right so that more people are seeing the good stuff real trades real money and if this was your first time here and you enjoyed it then click on subscribe hit the little notification bell because this way you get notified whenever i go live or release new videos and right now we are releasing uh two videos uh, and then i'm going live with coffee with marcus twice a week plus with the stock market update in the morning five times together with my head coach mark hodge so this is nine videos per week on this channel so I think you should definitely subscribe. Subscribing is a good thing. Subscribe right now. Hit the little notification bell. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.